Good morning and welcome to worship on this 7th of March. Uh, first announcement, and it's for the next Sunday, March 14th. Don't forget to uh, change your clock Saturday night um, because that's the time we do it. Otherwise, will they be early or late? Yeah, yeah, you lose an hour of sleep, that's all I know. Uh, so, um, that's uh, on the 14th of March. Also on the 14th of March, uh, we make an adjustment to our um, drive-in worship, moving it from the 1 o'clock that it has been recently, and it will be today, 1 o'clock at Calvary Lutheran, to 10 o'clock at First Lutheran on March 14th. And um, then, as we announced, I believe, uh, for Wednesday service, uh, March 21st, a very exciting day for us in this congregation to be able to, uh, to come back and to, to be in person in a, in a limited fashion. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of the, the rules and guidelines of how we make that happen uh, in your bulletin, which can be found on the website. But that is the 8.30 service on March 21st. And note that we're also looking for readers and ushers uh, for those services. And uh, don't be afraid to, you know, we were before the pandemic kind of taking uh, a month at a time for ushers. They were saying, hey, we'd really like to just do it for a month uh, and then someone else can do it. Uh, it is set up as every Sunday. Don't be afraid for signing up for a bunch in a row um, maybe it's you as an individual or you as you and a partner. Um, but that all can be found on the website, uh, www.flcbemidji.org forward slash usher hyphen reader. And it explains that in the, uh, in the, the bulletin. Or just go to the, the website, look under ministries, worship with us, and over to the right there is ushers and readers. So, let us begin with In the Cross of Christ I Glory, ELW 324. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry, 
and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. From the one who is and who was and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead, grace and peace be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing together Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery, hymn number 334.
Our first reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day, and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the first reading we will read responsively Psalm 19, or sing responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, the sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More 
are to be desired, are they then gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Here ends the reading. gospel lesson comes to us from St. John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal, for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The gospel of our Lord. Let us sing together. There in God's garden, ELW 342. Stand as the three of wind. 
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So I usually don't give uh, my messages a title, uh, but if I was to title this message, I would title it Back to the Basics. Um, It is a story that more than likely uh, many have heard, uh, probably many times, and most often we capture that, that piece where Jesus says, stop making my father's house a marketplace. And uh, we get stuck in that that is the main point of the story, that Jesus doesn't want the church to, to be a marketplace. And so, you know, I've heard churches that um, anything that resembles a selling of something uh, is forbidden because of a text like this. But I'm going to question this morning whether that actually is the, uh, the heart of this passage or if it's, if it's simply a statement that Jesus says. Because I believe the heart of this story lies somewhere different. And that different place is that Jesus was recognizing that instead of worship and devotion, what the people were giving in the temple was merely an exchange. I give God something, God gives me something. Because if you actually look at at the things that are happening in the temple, those were things that had been happening in the temple for years and generations. And they were even things that God in God's self started, you could say such as sacrifice. Going all the way back to the story of Abraham, it was God who told Abraham to go up to the mountain. And it was God who then told Abraham to sacrifice his son. God was checking Abraham's devotion, Abraham's worship of him. And just when it became apparent that Abraham was devoted to God and what God's instructions were, God provided a ram. And there you have it, a sacrifice made to God. And then you go to the story of Moses, and it is God who instructs Moses to tell the the Hebrew people who were living in slavery in Egypt to slaughter a lamb, and to take the blood, and to cover the doorpost, and then to roast that lamb and eat it all. And if you can't eat it all, uh, get together with another family And eat it all. And do this, not just once, but every year in remembrance of of this day. The day that I brought you out of slavery into freedom. And so sacrifice wasn't something that God was against. In fact, God told the people to do it. But see, over time, there, there were adaptations made, and even those adaptations seemed to be okay with God because they happened for generations. One of those, adv- um, those changes that had happened was the Hebrew people, the is- people of Israel, no longer were nomadic no longer lived in the countryside, 
had themselves herds of sheep and goats and rams. No, they had moved to the city, and now they did something else. Maybe they were medical. Maybe they were um, teachers. Maybe they were, you know, you fill in the blank, but they were living in the city and did not have a herd in which to choose the unblemished best one to sacrifice to God. And so what did they do? They came up with a plan. Well, we will uh, we'll sell you the lamb when you come to the temple. And this had been going on for a long time. And it, you know, it seemed that God was probably okay with that. Another uh, change that happened was um, that money, currency, became the way to, uh, to, to purchase those lambs. And um, at first, it was okay when, when Israel ruled itself. The currency of the land was made sure to follow the commandments that we just heard in the Old Testament lesson, not to have a graven image on them. And so that's the money that they used in the marketplace. But the Israelites were no longer ruling over themselves. And so the ruling authority had a different currency that had graven images of men who proclaimed to be gods or sons of gods. And so an adaptation happened and the money exchangers were put in the place. They saw a problem, they fixed the problem. And I'm sure that that practice went on for years and years as well. If those were the problems that God was dissatisfied with, then God would have struck it down long, long ago. No, I think Jesus recognized something else that had changed. And I'm going to call that uh, this exchange between God and humanity. No longer were the people necessarily coming to show their great devotion to God and to worship in the temple, but they were there to make an exchange. You know, here's uh, here's my money, there's my lamb. I'm done for another year. I don't have to come back. I can go back to my normal life, and I've done my duty. It wasn't done out of devotion or love for God. It was done out of duty. And Jesus saw that the hearts of the people did not belong to God. Maybe a little part of the heart did, but the rest of their lives, well, they were living as if God wasn't necessarily there. But Jesus, Jesus knew, as God says in that Old Testament lesson, I am a jealous God. I don't want just a little bit of your heart. I want your whole heart. I don't want just a a little bit of your time. I want all your time. I want you to recognize that the time that you have is a gift. I want you to recognize that it's me, God, who has given you that heart that keeps you alive, given you that breath which animates your body, giving you everything you have. I don't just want a little bit. I want it all. Let's translate that up. To, uh, to here we are, 2,000 years later, 
And you know what? I think God is speaking to us again through this message because I think we are acting a lot like those who were there to make an exchange with God. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do my duty and worship for an hour a week. I'll make that exchange and I'm done. Now I can go back to my normal life. Yeah, I'll volunteer to teach Sunday school. Means I give two hours a week. I'm even better than Lois over here that just gives one. I'm done. I've given more than many. We can even say we do it with our offering. We bring our offering and we do it out of duty rather than devotion or worship. God said through Jesus, I will, you tear down this temple and three days later it will be built up again. A shift from the temple to God. Because as John explains, Jesus was talking about his body being rebuilt after three days. Now, I think this is a challenging gospel for us in our lives. Who do you see yourself as? You know, which one of the characters are you? Because that's often how a, a word becomes a living word when we can read ourselves into the story. For some of us, uh, we are the, uh, the workers the money exchangers, the keepers of the rams in the church. Some of us are there to, to make that exchange and get out into the world and our day and all that's waiting for us outside this building. I believe God is challenging us to take a look at our lives and see if we treat our faith more like a duty than devotion. A duty than worship. Because God says, I don't want just a little bit of your heart. I want you to recognize that all that you have, all that you ever have been, all that you ever will be, is a gift. And the giver of that gift is the God who says, I am a jealous God. The good news is we, uh, we know we're broken and yet God still loves us. But that doesn't mean that God leaves us where we're at. That's where the challenge comes in. God calls us to worship because we're devoted to God. God calls us to give, to sacrifice, to serve. Not out of duty, but out of worship, out of devotion. Amen. Let us sing together, Lamb of God, 336.
I invite you to join with me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, died, and was was buried. buried. He descended descended to the the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe believe in the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the The Holy Holy Catholic Catholic Church, Church, the the communion of saints, the the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. We come now before the Lord with our tithes and offerings. And you may share your offering through uh, dropping it off here at the church, through mailing it in, or through giving online.
We sing together, Where True Charity and Love Abide, number 642. God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church, that in every situation your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering. Especially this day, we lift up to you Harriet Krauser, Colleen Lubkin, Steve Wick, and those we name in the silence of our hearts. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. We pray your blessing upon Tom and Luz Viminda Lembrick, married here yesterday, and grant your loving presence to surround them in their new life together. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's join our hearts together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, Amen. who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. 
You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. We sing together, Lift High the Cross, number 660. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.